Hey troops, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan and today we're going to be reacting to top 10 deadliest weapons of the US military. Like, share, subscribe. See you in the comments. Uh, let's go. The United States military is the most formidable in the world and all four branches are regularly doing... Is it... Is it the most formidable in the world? And that dude at the right hand side has a green beret on. Great acting. Research and development into the next generation of military weaponry. Weapons of war have become exponentially more technologically advanced over the last century. And it can be mind boggling to see just how far we've come since the days of biplanes and rifles. With any good fortune, the most powerful of these weapons. All right, that's pretty cool. What the hell is that? Is that even real or is that CGI? This will never have to be deployed during an actual conflict, but it can give us a sense of security to know that our armed forces have them at their disposal should the need arise. These are the 10 deadliest weapons that are currently part of the arsenal of the United States military. Mm, let's go. Active Denial System, or ADS, is technically meant to be a non-lethal weapon, but as with most weapons of this type, it can absolutely be quite deadly if not used properly. The ADS doesn't fire any projectiles. It's a directed energy weapon, which might sound like something out of science fiction. Yeah, I've never seen or heard of this before. But the vehicle-mounted ADS has been in use for a decade, and it's easy to see why it's earned the sinister nicknames Heat Ray or Pain Ray. It works somewhat similarly to a microwave oven, which should tell you all you need to know about- Actually. I think I have heard of this. Now, isn't there something to do with 5G or something, the technology in it, or the frequency or something that is used to similar to 5G? So maybe someone can help me out. About this weapon's potential for causing serious damage. The ADS emits a person-sized beam of millimeter waves, a type of electromagnetic radiation. The beam is invisible, but if you're in its path, you'll know it immediately. It produces a strong burning sensation, which only gets stronger the longer a subject is exposed to it. Stick around long enough and you'll feel like you're about to burst into flames, which makes the ADS pretty effective for... Yeah, I have heard of this, guys. It's um, used effectively in crowd control situa situations. I think, in fact, that's what it was actually designed for initially. Crowd dispersal. While the ADS yeah. is generally... <laughs> it literally just took the word out of my mouth. ...really mounted to ground vehicles, a 2011 redesign allowed it to be operated from a moving aircraft. And the Navy has also experimented with mounting the units to gunships. The Laser Avenger. The Avenger defense system... On a Humvee. On a not so good bit of kit. Um, nah, Humvees, yeah, pretty decent. They're all right. Some people love them, some people hate them. It's a lightweight, extremely portable surface to air missile deployment system, typically mounted on the backs of combat vehicles. It has a sophisticated infrared targeting system that allows it to find its targets during day or night in any and all weather conditions. They're usually deployed with a cache of Stinger missiles, but in 2008, the Avenger system got an upgrade. Manufacturer Boeing has long been experimenting with what could accurately be described as a laser cannon, and the newest version of the Avenger, appropriately dubbed the Laser Avenger, integrates a directed energy laser weapon with the Avenger's standard kinetic energy-based weapons. A real-life laser cannon might seem a little far out, but the device has undergone successful testing. In 2009, the Laser Avenger was able to successfully track three unmanned aerial vehicles during a test and shoot one of them down using only its laser. Obviously, this device is likely to see other applications in the near future, but it's interesting to know that the military currently possesses actual laser guns capable of tracking and shooting objects out of the sky. And that yeah, fighting with lasers and stuff is, it seems quite advanced, quite far-fetched, but in truth, the laser weapons is um, probably one of the most underutilized when I was in, but definitely at the forefront of technologies now. You hear of it all the time, these laser weapons and stuff, things that actually don't shoot projectiles out, which, one, it's helpful because you don't need ammunition. You just need the ability to power these things. Um, and if you can sustain that power output, you've got a weapon system that can pretty much fire indefinitely. So really good bits of kit. That such weapons are no longer exclusively in the realm of sci-fi. The M3E1. It's like a rocket launcher of some sort. The M3E1 is simply the latest iteration of the Carl Gustav, a lightweight anti-armor system which was first developed by its namesake inventor in 1946. While it looks wow. like nothing so much as a rocket launcher, it's actually technically a recoilless rifle, albeit one that fires a variety of massive 84 millimeter rounds, which are expressly designed to penetrate a tank's armor. The weapon is capable of being operated by just one soldier, but an additional soldier usually tags along to carry ammunition and reload. It's equipped with both fixed iron and optical sights, and can also be used in conjunction with an image 
intensification system for operation at night. The latest version produced in 2017 is capable of firing a multitude of different rounds and can be equipped. Right, he said recoilless, yeah? Recoil means no recoil. So let's have a look at this again. You tell me what you see. Be honest now. At night, the latest version produced in 2017 is capable of firing a multitude of different Boom. rounds. See that? That dude here? That definitely had some recoil, right? Well, firing a multitude Boom. of different rounds. Yeah, so it's not a recoilless rifle at all. Damn liar. And can be equipped with an intelligent targeting system and programmable ammunition. It's also shorter, lighter, and more ergonomically designed than earlier models. Tanks have been a part of warfare for over a hundred years, and for as long as they have been deployed, opposing forces have grappled with ways to take them down. With at least one M3E1 fielded to every infantry squad, deploying them against U.S. military forces just got a lot riskier. The C-130 cargo plane has long been a staple of the U.S. Armed Forces, but this model was designed for more than just hauling cargo. The Lockheed AC-130, also known by the names of its variants Spectre, Spooky, Stinger 2, and Ghost Rider, isn't going to be flying any solo missions. It's too big and slow of a target, and the fact that it has an unpressurized cabin means that it can only fly at a comparatively low altitude. But Ah, I didn't know that. That's pretty interesting that this thing has to pretty much fly at a low altitude. It seems so obvious now that they've mentioned it, but, you know, I would never have guessed that before. That is phenomenal. These things are literally death from above. With proper support, it becomes a nightmare for opposing ground forces because this is one big slow target which happens mm. to be armed to the teeth. The AC-130 doesn't strafe its targets like many gunships. Instead, it performs a pylon turn during an attack, essentially moving in a circle over its target while unloading its formidable cache of ammo. The standard model is equipped with one L-60 Bofors 40mm cannon and one 105mm M102 howitzer. The spooky model also features one 25mm equalizer cannon with an improved firing system and increased ammunition capacity. These gunships have been providing close air support for U.S. operations for over 50 years, and they have a sterling combat record, having been deployed as far back as the Vietnam War and as recently wow. as the current conflict with ISIS. And with modifications and revisions ongoing, the stars of America's gunship arsenal are only primed to get deadlier. The MK-19 was developed during the Vietnam conflict, but the first design was deemed too unsafe to use in the field. It took significant revisions for the unit to eventually be adopted by the U.S. Army in 1983, but it's remained in service ever since. The most succinct way to describe the MK-19? Picture a machine gun in full operation. Now, imagine it's firing grenades. Yes, the unit is a belt-fed 40mm fully automatic grenade launcher. So, give a little bit of context this from my military career. Um, we have something really similar in nature, um, GMG, grenade machine gun, um, and these things fire, it's, it's kind of a letdown, people expect it to be really, you know, and it's, it's kind of not like that, it's, um, it's a little bit of a letdown in terms of its actual, its feel, and the end result, yeah, it's going to cause an awful lot of damage, but trust me guys, the explosions at the end of those grenades are not massive by any stretch of the imagination, it's effectively just a, like a hand grenade, okay, which again, isn't really that big a deal when it goes off at the end, yes, it can cause catastrophic damage, but um, not as much as people would think, I know you might think, well, grenades go off, the whole building blows up, quite the contrary, these things are not that powerful. They're devastating, but I just want you to understand that they're not as powerful as, for instance, the movies will make out, if that makes sense. Which fires at a rate of up to 60 rounds, and again, by rounds, we mean actual grenades per minute. It has a ridiculous range of 1,600 to 2,400 yards, can be fired from a vehicle mount or a tripod, and is equipped with a flash suppressor, not for concealing the unit's position during nighttime operation, but for protecting the eyesight of its operator. It's an extremely versatile weapon. Hovering enemy helicopters, armored vehicles, and enemy bunkers are just a few of the targets the MK-19 is capable of taking out. Its rounds can pierce two-inch thick armor, and they produce fragments which would kill Kill or wound any personnel within a 15 meter radius of impact. Right, so think of that again. I've just mentioned it. 15 meter radius. So 15 minute he says can kill or seriously wound. So if you're like 30 meters the double the distance and you got your head down, and yes, you have to have your head down, you're probably gonna be okay. Probably gonna be okay a little bit closer to that. You could be okay 15 meters, but these things, like I said, they're, they're, they're not what people think, all right? They're not destroying buildings and stuff like that.
although it depends on the situation in which they're being utilized, I suppose. The unit is every bit as devastating as one would expect the Union of Machine Gun and Grenade Launcher to be. And in addition to the US, they're employed by nearly 30 allies around the globe. M A M A R S robot Mars robot. Looks pretty cool. Looks like something out of, I don't know, the Terminator or something. It might look like a mini tank, but it's actually something much scarier, an armed robotic soldier. The Mars, or Modular Advanced Armed Robotic System, isn't fully autonomous. It does require an operator, but as the platform was designed primarily for surveillance and reconnaissance, it can handle just about any terrain that a human soldier can, and it packs just as much firepower. The Mars is equipped with seven cameras so that its operator can monitor potential threats coming from any direction, and of course, they can be switched to infrared mode for nighttime operations. The unit has a 360-degree rotating turret outfitted with an M240B machine gun and four grenade launcher tubes. That is staggeringly scary. Something like that on your team would be absolutely insane, especially the infrared technology and the night vision. And it packs one grenade for each tube, along with 450 rounds of ammo. It can cruise along at up to seven miles per hour and can travel up to 1,000 meters from its handler. The unit can be modified for non-combat purposes. These systems can include a loudspeaker, a laser dazzler, a siren, or a manipulator arm capable of lifting 120 pounds. It's a truly unique and versatile system. And of course, each one deployed to the field means fewer human lives at risk. Yeah, number four, 10 deadliest weapons. I would have had this probably is higher up the food chain um, in terms of deadliest weapons. The fact that this thing can pretty much house all of the other deadly weapons that's just been mentioned um, really does make these things really, really capable. The United States is unbelievably at the forefront of technology when it comes to their maritime capability. These ships are phenomenal. They've got loads of them. Their you know, structure behind them is phenomenal. The way they operate is even better. Very, very scary indeed. I would probably have that at number one personally, troops. The Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, named for World War II United States Pacific Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, has done more to advance the cause of peace than nearly any other weapon of war in history. There are 10 of them active around the world, each of them powered by twin A4W nuclear reactors, which literally give them unlimited range. As the name implies, the Nimitz-class carriers are capable of delivering up to 70 aircraft, any and all of which may be equipped with free-fall nuclear weapons anywhere around the globe. The presence of these crafts serves as a strong nuclear deterrent, as they are able to deploy a fighting force of nuclear equipped bombers to locations around the world at a moment's notice. But they're not the most important part of that equation. When it comes to striking fear into the hearts of America's enemies, even the mighty Nimitz class is outclassed by a weapon that is also used in conjunction with a different vessel, which could be seen as the pride of the US Navy. The Trident II is simply the most powerful and reliable missile in the arsenals of both the US and UK. Desi I was going to say, um, that's something that the Royal Marines pretty much guard, all right? The Trident, um, what's it called? Trident missile. It's like they're literally the ultimate deterrent, okay? Last chance saloon type thing. And that's the reason why UK Shores is very safe today. Designed to be launched from a submarine. In fact, that's, is that the Royal Navy? Looks like the Royal Navy. That looks like Scotland. Looks like Faslin where these things are housed. The Trident. Yeah is a three-stage rocket with a dazzling range of 4,230 nautical miles while carrying a full payload. It's considered to be an essential component of U.S. nuclear deterrence as they're capable of hitting their... Right, well, this is Royal Navy footage. ...targets with nearly as high a degree of accuracy as land-based missiles and are every bit as devastating. The Trident has been in service both in the U.S. and U.K. since 1990, but it's not a standalone system. The marvels of modern warfare in which they are housed can be placed strategically at virtually any location with very little notice, and they are key to ensuring that nuclear Nuclear equipped enemies think very, very carefully before considering that most dire of options. Ohio class nuclear submarines. Okay, so that's number two. The Ohio-class submarine is the largest ever built for the U.S. military, designed to carry out deterrence with each one of those equipped with a dozen multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, each of which carries its own warhead. Do the math, and you'll see that each Ohio-class submarine is loaded with enough nuclear firepower to level an entire country in very little time, and possibly the most important part of the U.S. nuclear triad, with the other two being land-based missiles and nuclear bombers. Simply put, a first nuclear strike by an enemy against the U.S. stands a decent chance of wiping out a good portion 
portion of our missile and bomber arsenal, but Ohio submarines are designed for stealth, making them very difficult to locate and track. With these subs patrolling the international waters, initiating a nuclear strike against the United States would basically amount to suicide. And it's worth noting that the UK, one of our staunchest allies, has two dozen nuclear subs of its own, also equipped with Trident 2s. Well, yeah, he's mentioning that now, and all of the footage was actually British personnel. <laughs> Nuclear weapons are terrifying, and anyone who values life on Earth, which really should be all of us, sincerely hopes that they will never be used again. Decade yeah, I don't think we're going to see nukes used for a long, 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 long time. I'm just going to hazard a guess. I will never see it, um, you know, 50, 100 years. I just don't think it's going to happen, troops. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, because... Yeah, I'm really just not having it. Aids of non-proliferation on the part of the U.S. and Russia have severely decreased the number of nukes in service. But of course, those that remain have the power to destroy the entire world dozens of times over. Hostile nations such as Iran and North Korea have insisted that they too have a right to carry a big stick, so to speak. But when it comes to sheer destructive power, the U.S. carries the biggest stick of any nation on Earth. This would be the B-83, a nuclear warhead with a downright excessive amount of destructive power. Designed to be dropped from a bomber, the B-83 yields an unbelievable 1.2 megatons of explosive energy. That is the equivalent of 1,200,000 tons of TNT. To put this in perspective, that's about 80 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima near the end of World War II, making it easily the most powerful free fall weapon in the entire U.S. arsenal. Have any suggestions for things we... Well, troops, there we have it. Top 10 deadliest weapons of the United States military. Pretty generic in terms of what they have got, not going into too much of the specialised kit and equipment, most of which we don't know anyway. Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, nuclear, I guess you've got to put that at the top, haven't you, really? Because at the end of the day, if it gets utilised, then everyone's screwed. But um, troops, thanks for stopping by. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for coming, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, troops.